round one back at the MCG. Rogers, the D's taking on the doggies. We've had a bit of a fine dining experience with earlier. Three courses, uh, all of which the menu items had names that words that I've never even seen before. It was, yeah, it was sort of out of the dictionary I'm not acquainted to. Uh, but I'm just hoping for a result here. I was here on Thursday, I saw the draw, broke my heart. As long as we get a result, I'm happy. I, so, you always be the D's for me and I, I appreciate do. it. Are you concerned about no May, Salem, Viney or Fridge? I am concerned, but I'm not just concerned about what the D's are lacking, but more what the dogs have got. I think they're criminally underrated and I think they are very well a top four lift. Whether they make it or not is another question. So, we're a few games into the season so far. What's the weirdest result? I would say the power, getting the job done over the lines is the most shocking to me. Yeah, so convincingly as well. And you got to ask, is that a bit of Port Adelaide contenders or Brisbane are pretenders or a bit of both? Who knows? Um, I'm going to tip. Who, who are you going to tip for tonight's game? I'm going to go the D's by 23. I'm going to go the D's with a goal after the siren. After the siren, oh boy. We're in for an absolute heater here in the MCG. Round one, the D's and the dogs. Let's get it. Go D's. Go D's. Great pressure by Clayton Oliver on Bailey Smith out on the wing. Won the footy back for the D's, got it to Kay Chandler. I thought he had Grundy on a little bit longer, but he went the short option with Pickett, and the D's get the first on the board. Come on, Maxi. Oh! Full, the full forward, Maxi. Go on, going back and slotted it. He might be the best player in the league. Well, he very well might be. That is unbelievable. The connection was so much better that that forward connection is looking unbelievable at the moment that was awesome great work by Kate Chandler finally broken into the 22 for that role and that role only I want to say Grundy give me some Grundy he's in the middle now the big Grundy Jamara kicks the dog second it's the bond and then Jamara the dogs lead by a point they've owned the last five minutes so they've been on top the last five minutes um, a little bit frustrating but it's just the ebbs and flows of the first term. Quarter time here at the MCG. The D's 3-3-21. Three, three, the Dogs 2-4-16. Nothing separating either side, to be honest. The D's own the first 10. The Dogs own that middle patch as well. How are you seeing it, Rod? Yeah, I'm seeing it similar, but I think Party Boy's about to win $20,000. Oh, it's in over. there! It's in! Nah, it's not. Um, the Haynes kick for, kick for 10 grand. Um, and I, say, I do think that the D's have a bit more of a stranglehold on the game. Not by much, but by a little bit. Um, I'm hoping it widens as the game goes on. I obviously knew the dogs were going to come out round one, press their claims. They play some good footy, to be honest. Their forward line in a few years, if not in the next year or so, will be dominant. Like, Jamara starting to come of age. Sam Darcy floats across well. Lobs massive. Norton's huge. I think Gorney best on so far. I think he's really controlling the game, taking a few big marks. And uh, yeah, I think that the dogs are right there. I think that once again, people yeah. might have underrated them a little bit. But I think that they are right there with the best. Unfortunately, it's a bit of our turn, your turn, which is the brand I hate. I love how the D's can constrict sides to 50 to 60 points a game. I know the dogs have a lot of offensive power, but. At the moment, it's a bit of our, our turn, your turn, and I'm not quite happy with it. Bailey Williams puts through a pretty good goal from 50, which means which means they can't find that connection forward at the minute. It means they're going to have to kick from outside the arc to score. So, I don't know. A little bit frustrating, but um, very close start here at the gym. Norton kicks a snag, and the Dogs are out to a seven-point lead, start of the second term. Just starting to become a little bit worried. The Dogs are on top. They've been on top for the last 10 to 15 in the game. Getting a little bit frustrating, the D's have to respond here. Benny Brown kicks a relieving goal from the impossible angle in the pocket. Charlie Spargo, the connector, it was great ball movement up the shame wall and stand side. The D's reduced the margin to two points. Got to keep at it because the dogs have been on top here. Johannesson kicks a snag. They're up, by, they're up by seven points. It's The last time we played the dogs, we got into a shootout and we lost by ten points. I don't want to go goal for goal with a team like the Dogs because they kick goals for fun so frustrating halfway through this second turn. Cozzy Bigot, the fire starter for the days, he gets a free kick, Libby gave it away I think. Very soft, oh, very soft free kick. 
Libba held him in the contest. Cozzy kicks it. And then gives the oh, strong gives stuff to, to Libba. Oh, I love that by Coz. He's kept us in it. He single-handedly kept us in it here. We should be 25 points down for a pointer late in the second to him. Jeez, in the space of five minutes, the D's have a 13 point lead. I don't want to bring back bad memories for the Bulldog supporters, but the last minute and a half has felt a bit bang, bang, bangish by the D's boys. Straight out of the clearance, inside the forward 50, and we're scoring. So just consecutive snags here. And we're well and truly on top going into halftime. It's very late in the second term. The D's are on top here and we're going again. The truck oh, around the middle. He'll hit. He will hit. Goes long. Gone. 40. Yay! Gone, Mark. You're kidding. Halftime here at the MCG. The D's lead by 19 points. I felt like through moments in that second term, we should have been down by... 25-30, the Dogs had a lot of dominance for at least a quarter there, halfway through the first to halfway through the second, I felt like the Dogs were on top. We've wrestled back the momentum, we're winning it out of the, the set of clearance, which is what we were getting beaten, which is where we were getting beaten, and um, yeah, couldn't be any happier. So the D's lead by 19 at half time, plenty more football to go in this game. The Dogs have played well. And the D's have slightly played a little bit better, but there's plenty more footy to go. Come on, D's. Halfway through the third, Trelaw kicked a goal to reduce it to 16, or to reduce it to 14, but the D's get it out the centre and answer back straight away. We're kicking goals out from the midfield, which is so powerful. Just taking advantage of the 666. Uh, Benny Brown almost fumbled in the goal square and almost didn't finish his own good work, but he got it in the end, collected, and kicked the snag. Very even third term here. We're only separated by the same halftime margin that the D's had by 20 points. Good game of footy. Jack McRae slots a late one. Miracle goal out of the stoppage on the left foot from the boundary. We've given up a couple of annoyingly tough snags, but it, it makes me proud of the defence. So yeah. Bailey Williams is kicking one for 55, and Jack McRae is kicking one for the boundary, running hard on his left. I know he's a left foot up, but running hard on his left. It makes me feel like they're not getting conventional marks in the goal square. So the defence is holding up, but that is a bloody good finish by Jack McRae. 15 points, very late in the third term. We don't want to give up one more before the three-quarter time siren. After the dogs kick one late in the term, we get a nice little response. Gorney, I thought, fluffed the kick inside 50. Didn't quite hit Spargo or Chandler. Spargo gathered, gave a little handball to Cade Chandler, who finishes on the left. It was a beautiful goal. That is a handy buffer going into three-quarter time. Can't concede another. D's up by 21. Cozzy Pickett adds a bit of icing on this third quarter with another late one. The D's 13, 7, 85. The Dogs 8, 10, 58. They've been good in patches, the Dogs. But the D's late in the second and late in the third have been able to kick clear. That is a handy margin going into the last quarter. Three-quarter time here at the MCG. The D's lead by 28 points. There's been shifts in momentum throughout the whole game. The Dogs had dominance through the second quarter and a bit of the first, but just that class at the end of the terms. End of the second, we kicked two or three goals, and end of the third, we piled on the goals as well. Just running out quarters better than the Dogs at the moment. Just a little bit of a class. We seem to be a little bit of a level above them at the moment. Cracking game of football. One more term to go, and the Ds have iced a round one win, hopefully. So we're nearly there. That's got to Come be on. the nail in the coffin. End-to-end -end footy, Clayton Oliver to Cozzy Pickett. Kicks to the sub, Malcolm. I had no idea he was even in the game. I had, I had no idea he was even in the team selection, but Jake Malcolm has cruised through the 55 out and kicked. Classy finish from Libba from 50. Once again, it's like, if they're gonna slot snags from 50, Bailey Williams, um, Tom Liberatore, if Jack McRae's gonna slot him from the boundary, it's frustrating as a Melbourne supporter because it's like, geez, I feel like defensively we've held up well but you can't stop the class. So when the cream rises to the top and Tom Libertore is slotting them from 50, you sort of just got to take your cap off and accept that he's just a good Come player. on, Brody, Finish it, son. Yeah! <laughs> Brody Grundy, I think that's his first goal for the Melbourne Football Club. Don't know about the free kick. Oh, it was absolutely there. I didn't see it in real time. Brody Grundy makes it 15, 11, 100, and 1 to 9, 10, 64. The D's are home halfway through this last, and we have won in round one.
End to end football results in a Benny Brown goal on the run. Superb defence. We stopped the snag. They, they were on going forward, the dogs, but we, we held it up. Great defence. Tom Sparrow, Angus Brayshaw, everyone got involved. We go end to end, and it's a great finish by Benny Brown. The D's are out. I think it's getting to like a 43 point margin. This is massive. This is a massive result. The D's have gotten home here at the MCG. Pretty emphatic performance in the end. I thought we were sort of battling in that second term. But by the end of the last term, it was an emphatic performance. So, can't complain. Cozzy kicked four, Ben Brown kicked four. The dogs had patches, but I felt like we culled momentum as well as we've ever culled momentum. Um, yeah, 10 out of 10 performance for round one. We got the Lions on Friday night, which is as tall a task as you could ever think of. So butter up and we go again. Hopefully we get some ins. I don't know if Fritch or Viney or May will be in, but that would be handy if we can add some inclusions to that contest. But super stoked with that performance. The Ds are undefeated to start season 23.